here in Maricopa County is uh, here to say a few words and uh, answer any questions you might have. And we'll do our best to answer those. If it's something you need to research or something like that, uh, certainly we'll, we're happy to do that via email and uh, get you those answers as quickly as possible. So with that, Sheriff Penzone. Well, I just want to begin by uh, thanking everybody for your patience because I know that it's been a long haul uh, to this point and there's a lot of work being done and uh, you have a job to do, which is to cover the story and cover different perspectives. We've asked a lot of you and you've been very cooperative. So let me just begin by saying thank you for understanding the challenges that we face in working with the parameters that we've asked you to consider uh, and abide by. Uh, I also think it's important, you know, that these I get to work in this context where obviously we have a great responsibility and I'm really proud of the men and women of Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and our law enforcement partners and the job that they're doing. But because we're in this space, we get a chance to see everything from the inside out. And folks can get emotional. There's a lot at stake. They can uh, sometimes act irresponsibly. There are a lot of folks who are very comfortable in saying things that are unkind and oftentimes volatile or disrespectful. But it's important for folks to be adults in the room when some are acting like children. And I don't mean that the cast disparaging uh, words towards anybody individually, but we know there's some, some people that just get overzealous and do some things that give us cause for concern. Otherwise, the sheriff wouldn't be here talking to you. But somebody who I think has done an exceptional job being the adult in the room, being very thoughtful with the processes, sharing information on a regular basis, and making sure that as across the nation, a lot of folks are saying, why is it taking so long in Arizona? that you have someone who is taking the lead to speak to you every day to help you understand why. Uh, and that's Chairman Bill Gates. I just want to commend him because I think he's done an exceptional job of making sure that everything that can be shared is shared in a timely manner, that you understand why there are challenges and complications, but ultimately there's a commitment to one thing that is most important, that every legal vote is counted and that the results are 100% accurate. And Stephen Richer obviously works in that space with him, Recorder Richer, but I'm not a person who believes in political lines. I believe in people, and I think he's done an exceptional job. So I just want to start off by saying that because it has made our job easier also. Now, as far as today, it's the first day that we've seen really a crowd gather outside. You've been here since, since the beginning when I made the commitment to how invested we would be with resources and equipment to ensure the safety of the people in this building and every ballot is protected. Today we saw a group come out. and. You know, I profess leadership means being thoughtful with your words and recognizing the consequences or what your words can provoke others to. And we saw yesterday there were some tweets going out from uh, at least one elected official summoning folks to come here today and to be heard. And it gave me some cause for concern and some pause because you may be well intended but that doesn't mean that everyone who responds to your calling has the same intentions and it can empower them into a space where bad things can happen. So we were very concerned. We made sure that we once again dedicated additional resources because we want to see a safe environment at the cost of, of other needs around the county for law enforcement, at the cost of taxpayer dollars, deputies, in addition to those we had stationed here, came to the facility to make sure everything was safe. Now as for the crowd outside, very, you know, they were peaceful. Uh, they, they had an objective. They stayed within that scope and, and, and they left in a reasonable amount of time. I did have some safety concerns, which is there were some folks marching in the street and uh, we want to make sure that area is, is safe. But for, fortunately for us, we have a great partner in the Phoenix Police Department who showed up and they helped us address the problem in the street to make sure that no one was in harm's way and that people were abiding by the law. Uh, aside from that, there was one other instance I do want to point out, which is there was one person who I, I guess had some uh, heat exhaustion or something to that extent. Our deputies cared for them. We called paramedics, and that person, my understanding, is fine. Ultimately, you know, we're, we're getting closer to the end of this process, and my hope is that all the answers come to, you know, to rise to the top. Every, every election is, is counted and, and ends in the next few days without any need for recounts. We'll stay here through the duration, though, but thus far into it, I just want to say thank you. I think that the community has responded in a very positive way. I think those folks who came out today were, were law-abiding and they had their chance to you know, express their First Amendment. We respected that. And this is kind of an odd one. I'm going to give a shout out to somebody. I guess uh, there's a young man named Charlie Kirk is part of an organization. I have a whole lot of familiarity with it, but he sent out a message and said, hey, be law-abiding and please you know, don't gather around the county facilities and let folks do their job or something to that extent. 
and it seems as though his words resonated. He's viewed as a leader in, in, in some factions and some groups, and they responded to it. That's helpful for law enforcement. If you really care about this building, this vote, these people, and this law enforcement community, then help us get our job done, and, and those are the types of things that are helpful. So that sums it up for me. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. You want to do that now or you want to do it at the end? Okay, I apologize. I have to, I'll turn it over to Supervisor Gates now, but thank you. Hi, good to see everyone again. Thank you very much, um, Sheriff Penzone, for the kind words, but more importantly, thank you for your leadership uh, of this, this community, Maricopa County, and helping everyone to feel secure through this process. As I've said before, it's really sad that we have to think about these things in the context of an election in a democratic republic, but we do. We know that because of what happened right outside of this building in 2020. But again, uh, Sheriff Penzone has been an incredible partner of the Board of Supervisors, Recorder Richer, uh, and then along, at, along with our local, other local law enforcement, City of Phoenix and others, and our federal partners. This, it, this didn't just materialize here in the last few days. This is a project that Sheriff Penzone has been working on in collaboration with many for months. And I, again, I just thank you. I thank your team. And I, I think I speak on behalf of everyone in this building uh, that we're all so grateful for what you've done. Uh, so uh, first of all, I wanted to say uh, thank you again to our folks who are working so hard uh, back behind us here and throughout the building, and we continue to process through uh, the, the ballots and tabulate the ballots and report new numbers. And we're going to continue to do that in a, in a way that is moving along very efficiently and also ensuring that all these votes are counted accurately. As I mentioned during yesterday's press conference, the mandatory hand count was started today, going along very nicely. This is a very important part of the process, particularly when we have so many questions that are raised out there. And that's what we do in, in, in our country is we raise questions and then we allow people to respond to those and we accept those answers if we think that they're justified. And this mandatory hand count will be able to demonstrate to all of us whether the machines are doing an accurate job. And remember, who's involved in this mandatory hand count? It's Republicans and Democrats. Having eyeballs on everything, participating in it to ensure that the machines are working the way that they should. As far as uh, we are concerned with vote counts today, we're anticipating that we will have our next update in the vote totals in the 6 o'clock hour. Again, reminder, 6 o'clock hour. So that doesn't necessarily mean at 6 or 6.01, but we should all be looking forward to an update in the vote totals at that time. And we are anticipating, again, a similar amount of votes will be reported this evening as we've seen in the last couple of nights. Uh, and with that, uh, would, uh, I will turn it back to Fields Mosley. Okay, we'll uh, open it up to questions now. I'll start on this side of the room and let's go to Kyung Long. Yes, we're, we're, that's an understanding also that Monday there will be a gathering again. And, you know, so we keep a foundation here, a foundation to ensure that we are prepared to, to manage or mitigate any potential, potential challenges or issues on a smaller scale. But we try to stay in front of the information. So um, fortunately for this facility and for the people therein, we're going to move people here as quickly as we need to to address the volume of potential protesters, activists, community members, whomever are outside. I just, I just want to remind everybody, there are a lot of ways that you can express your concerns. You can you know, um, find ways to improve who we are as a community and a nation. If being out front for you is one of those things you feel empowers you, then, then that's wonderful. But just understand, it comes at a cost. And every time we see a larger gathering outside, that means I'm dedicating more deputies inside because I will not, I have professed this and I will continue to, I will not allow for nor will I stand for any threat to this facility, the votes, or the people. So we're not going to wait for you to do harm and then try to react to it. We're going to prepare in advance so that you can't do harm. 
So there are families out there, there are calls for service, there are deputies who are going to go without the volume of backup or support that they may need because we have to prioritize this facility. So if you want to come stand out front, that's your prerogative, that's your right, that's your, you know, your freedom. But you are, in, in one way or another, undermining the sheriff's office ability to address the other needs in our community because this becomes a drain on resources. So we're going to be here through the duration, and, we'll, and, and if it's one day or five more days of, of folks out front, we'll be here for all of it. And you just thanked Charlie Kirk for helping you today. Did that change? Want to ask for more help from Monday? Yeah, you know, listen, you know, I'm the type of person I'm, I'm going to speak to those who create problems for us and, and point out that it's not acceptable, and, and for those who do things uh, that, that are thoughtful and responsible that help us, you know, uh, navigate this unique space. So again, I don't, I don't know Mr. Kirk, I don't know his organization, anything about it, but I appreciate the fact that he understands, at least in, his, in that communication, that he could be helpful to us, and he was, so for others. Um, there are elected officials who are calling for things, and, and that feels powerful. You call on something, and suddenly you see the crowd summon, and you think that, you know, you're the almighty Oz. Well, guess what? You know, at some point in time, we have to address that issue, and, and we're going to pull the curtain on you, and you're just back there with the handles, but there's a lot of other things going on for people that are in harm's way, and it, and it creates jeopardy. So. Be thoughtful. Don't treat this like it's just a show. It's bigger than that. It's more important than that. And recognize there's real people back here doing a job, and they get scared when they see people out there yelling, you know, pretty offensive things in this direction. I don't know. Do I just come back to you, or how does this work? Here? They have more questions for the sheriff. Uh, yeah. Boston. Um, Boston's with Fox News. Sheriff, I'm going to your understanding of the purpose and activity of the Dennis Club today. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I could say that that, that group, from my understanding, has diminished and, and gone away for today. Um, I have no idea who's in store for what later on in the day, so we'll just kind of uh, keep things as they are for us and, and manage it as it goes. And uh, leading up to the I election, scooting back and scooting during on. the press conferences, you guys all mentioned if you know politicians or people on the candidates use rhetoric or on the ballot use rhetoric that would incite violence, that you guys would be looking into working with the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Are you guys considering bringing any sort of charges against Wendy Rogers? Or well, there weren't any criminal actions that I'm aware of today. But I will, I will tell you this, and I was talking to Supervisor Gates. Listen, if, if you are an elected official and you are doing things to, to, to provoke a crowd to come out front here that can lead to the point of there are you know, acts of violence or crimes, not only should we put you at the top of a criminal report and, and charge you or request charges against you, but I feel like we should send you the bill. Every time I bring deputies here that I didn't need otherwise because you as an elected official create a problem that causes me to respond, you're a state legislator or senator or whomever you are, then I feel like the county should send you the bill for the resources that we're committing because of your political action that puts others in harm's way. Will you be doing that? Well, you did have to send an email today. Will I be doing that today? Uh, I don't know that we do it today because I don't know if the, the uh, escalation of, of deputies today was substantial, but I'm just putting you on notice that don't put me in that place where I have to make that decision. And I'm not even sure the legalities of it, but I'm sure happy to go down that path to see what's appropriate. Can we just stay here until we... For the sheriff? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, did you have a personal conversation with Wendy Rogers about her tweet? We also noticed that a few hours later she then uh, sent out another tweet asking people not to come by. Was that as a result of a conversation and just see what happened? No, I, I haven't spoken to her. I, I appreciate the, the follow-up because it seems as though, you know, between those two tweets that was... And, and quite frankly, thank you for coming inside because you are the honey of the bees. So when you're inside, it seems like people are less interested outside. But those three elements, the perfect storm coming together, then the crowd um, shrunk considerably fast. So I don't know. I wish I had a better answer for you than that. And then just to follow up on that tweet, you mentioned that the crowd remained mostly peaceful. Was there any heckling of the people, uh, towards the people inside, towards your deputies as well, that concerned you at any point? Oh, no, I think I was the lightning rod. I got most of the heckling today. Um, but uh, it's not the first time. I won't be the last. So, yes, you're welcome, everybody. I'm happy to be that uh, person if they want to heckle me. But otherwise, I don't think that – at least I'm not aware of anything beyond that point. It seems as though when I left the immediate area, then they were, you know, very kind to the Phoenix police officers, and, I, and my understanding is they were very kind to the deputies. So. Well, we had two unique circumstances that occurred today. One, uh, unbeknownst to us, there was some construction, so there were some barricades set up that actually – um, restricted the curb lane on the south side of the road. 
and those who showed up today thought maybe that was parking for them, and we had to have the Phoenix Police Department move those vehicles off the road and pull those barricades. Uh, the other aspect was some of the, um, those out there were marching in the street, which not only is it against the law, but it's unsafe. So we want to make sure that that does not occur. Now, if these things occur and people are unwilling to abide by our directives, then you're looking at situations where do we issue citations or how do we best solve that problem? We want it to be with the least amount of lawful intervention as possible as long as you're cooperative. But if you're uncooperative, then you, you put us in a position to, to respond a little more aggressively. Um, hi. Hi. Sure. So, you know, in an organization of law enforcement, it, you, you wear multiple hats. So a lot of the deputies that you see out there, some are going to be coming from patrol districts where they would be responding for calls for service. And what we do is we end up going minimum staffing and pulling some of those folks back in an organization that's already thin on staffing. Um, the, the folks that work, you know, in specialty assignments that track different threats in different spaces, investigators that work on major crimes and, and, and general crimes, things like crimes against children, robberies, murders, you know, anything like that, those investigators may either be in uniform here or working as backups for investigations should there be a crime committed. Our tactical resources, so our SWAT teams, work in some capacity here where they are on, on site when needed. And then we have what's called field force. Field force are deputies that work in the field, but when these issues occur, they put on the battle armor, for lack of a better description, and they stand by with the more advanced equipment to repel crowds if it's needed. So there's nobody on site that their sole job is let's wait around for a crowd to gather and that's all we do. They have primary responsibilities and this is their 1A job where, okay, the, you know, the bell's been rang and we got a bigger issue to deal with, so we're going to come together and we're going to suppress that um, and, and push that, that threat back away from people and from facilities. Well, it, it sounds like you're asking, like, do we dedicate a specific number and try to work within that scope? Unfortunately, you know, it's it's a blank check that I send over to the supervisors at the end and say, this here's how much it costs. And it does come out of my budget, uh, but we've had the conversations in the past because we've seen what's occurred that we literally have to kind of allocate a line item with an estimated amount of money for the course of the year that is specifically to civil disturbances, major events such as these that are out of the ordinary. And it goes back a few election cycles, and, and I want to say it was even before I was sheriff out in Fountain Hills, we saw an escalation there where suddenly we had to account for it. But make no mistake about it, it gets in the seven digits. You know, the, I think the last one that we, that we had over the course of time, it was up over a million dollars in additional supplemental resources specifically for events such as these. But you can't put a value on what is also neglected, you know, things that we have to follow up on after the fact. Um, me making decisions that sometimes get me in trouble because I have to go, okay, public safety has to be my number one priority and there's other responsibilities that I have and if it seems as though I'm being intentionally negligent there, I'm not, but, you know, I, I have to decide where the priorities are and you're the priorities. Anything else? Going once, going twice. Oh, I was so close. I know, I'm sorry. There's an interesting saying, and, and it, it's pretty fundamental, but you know, hopefully it speaks for itself. The most difficult thing to disprove is a negative. When someone claims something that didn't happen and they want you to disprove it, oftentimes there is no evidence to disprove something that never happened, and it just lives then in infamy where it's kind of like, well, we said it, they didn't show us that it didn't happen. Well, because there was nothing to indicate that it did. And I think it's a lot of what goes on with misinformation. Say whatever you want and let that other person figure out how to defend it. You know, it's a saying, a lie travels around the world, you know, 10,000 times before the truth meme gets started. That's what we're seeing here. We're seeing people empowered by saying things that make them feel good and they're not accountable for it and they lie. And then good men like Supervisor Gates and Recorder Richer and others, instead of focusing on getting this job done, they're out here talking to the community saying, trust us, we're good real people that care about the community. That's why we're public servants. Um, but you're, you're distracting us with all this other nonsense that, I, that he's had to answer to for a week now, so I feel for him.
Not as much as when I'm out there getting heckled, but a little bit. <laughs> Anything else? God bless. Thanks. Yeah, and I'll follow up on that as well. Actually, I think I'm on the same page with the people saying count the legal votes. That's what I've been saying. We can't just throw every vote in there. We have to only count the legal ones. That's what the signature verification process is about. Everything that we've been going through that I know, again, a lot of people across the country are frustrated with who haven't followed Maricopa County elections or Arizona elections uh, for the past couple of decades. But that's exactly what we're doing, making sure they're legal and then they get counted. What goes on the agenda tonight? What votes will be released? Like, so you're saying timetable Sunday? Um, not sure on the timetable for Sunday. Uh, this will be a ve the very large majority of the votes that will be released this evening will be late early's dropped off on election day. Not all of them, though, but but uh, the, the great majority of them. Going off of Taylor's question, so for months you guys have been doing weekly press conferences, um, making this the most transparent election ever, um, and really since 2010. And I bet you responded to tens of thousands of phone calls, emails. You have a section on your website, your Twitter account. And yet, the conversations I had outside, a couple of Supreme Courts were saying, this department is intentionally releasing Democrat Well, again, thank you for acknowledging that we've done a lot of work. Our communications team has done an incredible job to get the word out. But I guess what I've heard here is that these folks listen to Charlie Kirk. So maybe if Charlie Kirk would take the facts down that we're presenting and share that with the folks, they would feel better. Again, this issue about selecting certain votes to report, let me be very clear about this again. FIFO, first in, first out. That's how we do this. We are not picking them from certain parts of town. In fact, we can't do that because we have a vote center model. So let's say we have someone who lives in Gilbert, but they work in Surprise. They go to the vote center in Surprise on their lunch hour. Where's that from? Okay, that's my point. So it, it is irrelevant, um, and it is an incredible distraction. And for, the, for, I guess, people who are following this, it's not a distraction for our folks. It's not a distraction for me, quite frankly. They're trying to make it a distraction, but it's not. Yes? It's not completed yet. They're still going on, and I believe it's going to be completed tomorrow. Yes? Um, so at Thursday's press conference, you said, quote, quite frankly, it's offensive, but very right to say that these people behind me are slow rolling this. Now, these political comments that have been made usually prompted by questions, do you worry that this could be creating greater unfounded distrust in the process? No, I don't at all. It's not a political statement. I'm responding to statements that were made about the people who are behind me. That's my job. My job is to work with our other directors here, to work with Stephen Richer and make sure that this is managed properly. If there are things that need to be fixed, we're going to do that. At the same time, though, if unfair allegations are being made, I'm going to respond to those because we don't want that misinformation out there. If people out there in the community think that we're slow rolling this, the vote, uh, the release of the votes, then that starts to create further concerns with the process. So I'm standing up for the process, but I'm not, you know, th this is not a political statement. Yeah. So the ballots today, uh, where are they coming from? So, so the ballots, as I mentioned over there, the types of the types of ballots are mainly late early's dropped off on election day. Again, from where they are coming, they are coming from across the valley because, like I said, we have a vote center system. So again, if there are you know, other analysts who want to look at this information on where these people live and send out tweets about that, that's great, but that's not what I do. What I do is work with, this, with these folks, make sure that the vote counts get out, everything is going on track, only legal votes are being counted, but I'm not up here, and I've never been up here to say where these individual votes may be coming from. First in, first out. Yes. 
Yes. So in addition to that, we would have some more of the votes coming out of the box three. We'll, we'll have some of that and, yeah, and curing. And then also where we have cured signatures. So we don't know when. You know, that could be from a couple weeks ago um, or other provisionals that might be cured. Let's say someone comes in with their ID that they didn't have um, on election day. So again, but these are a, a small number compared to the large majority being late early's dropped off on election day. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It is, this is a completely different world that we're living in than 2020. I think our team did a great job communicating in 2020. But since 2020, we've gone through a lot here. This board was sort of placed in the national spotlight as it related to certifying the election results in 2020. And then in 2021, we had the so-called uh, audit from the Cyber Ninjas, and that was just a constant flow of misinformation that we became adept at responding to. We began to understand the importance of responding to that misinformation accurately and quickly. And so we've continued that because sadly, not making a political statement here, but sadly there continues to be a lot of misinformation from all different sources that are out on social media right now as we go forward in this count. So that's why we have to continue to do this. This is not something that I relish, but it's something that we believe is very important to do, and we'll continue to do it. Let's take two more questions. I've got Fox 10 back here. Yeah, so you've talked continuously about the entire universe of these votes, about how many hours they're working to, to put forth uh, this count. Uh, when they see giant protests like this, or when they see the misinformation on Twitter, can you speak to the morale and what that does? You know, the morale is good back here. This is why these people do this work, to be here when it matters. And this matters like it never has before, honestly. So the eyes of the world are on Maricopa County, and these people could be doing a lot of other things, but they've chosen to be here. And frankly, for the folks who were out there, folks who came to protest uh, and, and gather, I won't even use the word protest, to gather peacefully, and that's what they did, May have, sorry, may have said a couple unkind things to Sheriff Penn's own, but I know he can handle it. But other than that, they came, it's 70 degrees out here, uh, you know, nice weather, and everything was peaceful, and they're headed home. So I don't think anyone here is bothered by that. There are things that happened in 2020 that I know they were bothered by. But so far, you know, so good on that. But let's continue to do that. Let's show our best, Maricopa County, and I have no doubt that we're going to. We're getting closer to the end of this every day. Any more questions? Right Jim, here. Not to put the cart in front of the horse here, but we are looking at some really tight races here, specifically in those time watch uh, state uh, races. Um, what is it going to look like? Can you kind of give us an insight to the process of what a recount could look like now that you've extended those more teams? So um, this question uh, with respect to the automatic recount, under Arizona law, there's actually been a change in that. So it used to be we would only have an automatic recount if the, the margin was 0.1%, okay? And so it was very rare, very rare. We did have one in uh, the primary in a justice of the peace race, uh, but very rare. Now it's gone from, again, the state legislature changed the law in this session, going from 0.1% to 0.5. So if it's within a half of a percent we will have an automatic recount. And if that's within the state, okay, if that's the margin within the state, then we'll have an automatic recount across the state, including in Maricopa County. It would be after the Board of Supervisors votes to certify the election. It'll be after the election is certified at the state level. So it'll be in early December that that process would start. And it would be in whatever races happen to be within that margin. Now, just for a little historical background, in 2020, if this new law had been in effect, we actually would have had five races 
that would have gone to an automatic recount. So we have no idea what that's going to turn out to be, um, but, but, you know, if that happens, the team is ready uh, to be here in December. I uh, think they might have the eggnog out and, uh, uh, you know, candy canes, but we'll see how all that works out. But, again, thank you, everyone, for your time today, and uh, be looking for new numbers in the 6 o'clock hour. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you.